So, hello guys, um, good morning, and welcome to Let's Talk Stupid. So, today, let's be stupid for a while, let our minds run creative, and enjoy the podcast. Yay! So, this is um, Moderator One Compound. Um, you can hear a little bit of like traffic sound. I'm super sorry about that. I'll try to fix it. <laughs> okay, so um, I I am here with my friend Proud. Yay! Hi guys. And so um, I also have a confession. I just woke up, so I might sound quite sleepy, and my brain won't function properly. Okay, so um. Firstly, we want to talk about how our show will go, like the basic structure, what we want to talk about, what we can share with you guys, and how is this going to be, like how often will we upload, and sort of that stuff. Yeah. So firstly, Prao, can you tell us about the content of this podcast? So we'll basically talk about the future, like from our perspective, and use our creative brains to like some come up with something cool. Yeah, and we'll probably do a little bit of research to make it sounds more believable. If something we said sounds really, really stupid, so we want to make sure that you guys get something from this podcast alongside with entertainment as well. And we're just high school students, so don't have like high expectations, though. <laughs> yeah, this is like for fun, and mostly we want to focus on creativity more than those theories and stuff about future. We want to, you know, theory can't predict everything, right? But creativity is what leads to theory, so we want to start with that first. Yeah, and we'll be uploading weekly, and we have, and because we are still high school students. There might be some weeks that we couldn't upload because we have too much homework, so we have some like important exams coming up, and so this year is actually like one of the most critical year of Thai education, right? And we somehow agree to like do this podcast, and yeah, it's insane. Yes, because creativity cannot be keeping captive, right? Due to a lot of homeworks and due to ex- entrance exam as well, so if the exam Become pretty intense, then we maybe have to take a little hiatus notice. Um, so uh, I hope you guys understand that when the time has come. But we hope that there will be no circumstances like that. Yes. So what are we talking today, Compound? I think we will be talking about ourselves because you just, you guys don't know us yet, and we just wanted to introduce ourselves to you first, but in a very special form. Our format. <laughs> yeah. So we decided that we are going to predict each other's future, right? And then we'll just like give some comments whether it's possible or it's like, uh, what do you say? Too creative to be true in the future. There's no such thing like that. Anything could happen. Well. Not in the time that you're alive, right? Sure. <laughs> yes. So this episode will be called "We Will Be Stupid," and every episode will be fall. Fo- the episode name will be followed with "Will Be Stupid" because anything in the future can be stupid, right? It can be stupidly creative, stupidly nice, stupidly innovative. Yeah. I run. I run out of adjective now. So, okay, let's start. How about you predict my future first, Proud? Yeah, I really want to go first <laughs> because that will like put less pressure on me and more on you. <laughs> and so, let's get started. First, you'll be going to Germany because you got a place in an engineering school there. And in the third year, you've been there. Uh, you have like a small crisis about what you'll do for a living in the future, and you'll come up with like a decision of whether you should come back to Thailand and find a job here, or you should like do a master degree and you can stay a little longer in Germany, and you'll be very stressed out about it, and then you'll decide eventually that you want to come back to Thailand because you can stay with your family and you might. Even find a job here, and it's your native country. So you'll come back to Thai. You you'll want to come back to Thailand. But your plan 
will all be blown away because you'll fall in love with a German guy. And it's, it's just the beginning though. So you'll fall in love with a German guy. So you want to have a reason to stay there longer, right? And so you figure, yeah, sure, I'll do a master degree and I'll apply for a job in Germany. And so you apply for a random job, like an engineering job though, but yeah, a random company. And then you do a master degree alongside with that. I'm not sure if there's like a part-time master degree. I bet there is. Yeah. And then you, you continue to do, you'll continue to work at that place for like a couple of years. And then you'll be like, no, this is not competitive at all. And I just want to like find something interesting. So you apply for another job in a big tech company. Big evil <laughs> tech company, right? I know you would say that. So I just find funny to put it in there. Yeah. And you'll get a job there in that big evil tech company. And, and you actually enjoy it. Because I'm evil? Are you applying that? No, because it's better than you thought it would. And uh, you actually made lots of friends and you enjoy your job very much. And you will want to like write your first book because you have an interesting job in that company and you can, it can be look, wait, and it can be lucrative. You write your first book and it's probably about like partly about the company, about the concept that you're interested to at that point. And uh, you'll also like, because I know you, so you'll put like a story of your life in that like seamlessly. So because you secretly want to write your own bio autobiography, but you don't want people to be like, oh, this is Compound's autobiography, so I won't read them. But you want to put it in there like seamlessly and with like <laughs> the cover of the book would be like uh, something conceptual but actually it's about your life you'll just continue to like work in this giant tech company for like years and so uh, let's snap back to reality for a bit so yesterday a rover called uh, Perseverance just landed on Mars and I'm just really into Mars and space right now so I figure yeah compound you would go to Mars <laughs> yeah so you go to Mars because that because obviously that giant tech company want to send some engineers to Mars <laughs> to like colonize Mars and make it hospitable for human to actually live there. So you were sent there to Mars and I think it would be a great experience though, don't you think? Like you know like essentially what a human needs to really survive and thrive in like such an uncertain condition. Yeah, it'll be fun, I guess. I'm like a social butterfly anyway, so it won't be a problem, right? <laughs> and this part is kind of weird, but I I thought I'd say like you meet an alien and you like you fall in love with an alien and like completely dump that German guy but <laughs> but no but but no I will I'll say you'll just meet an alien well I think like even though nature is funny sometime you're probably attracted to like the same species right so let's say you just meet an alien and don't fall in love with it or something <laughs> and then you'll come back to Earth, like after like two or three years of being in, on Mars. And then uh, you'll be famous because you've been on Mars and you'll be invited to like many to give a, you'll be invited to give a speech on many conferences and you'll be famous, of course. So you're going to like write your second book about Mars, obviously, is why not? And you'll reconnect with your families and your significant other and you'll get a dog or two is you've said you always wanted one and at this point i don't think you have kids like you might be ba married but i don't think you have kids though right yeah well maybe i lost them because i killed them probably oh that took a dark turn let's ignore that okay so and You'll just keep like working in this t 
tech company and you'll be very rich, you'll be very famous. And when you, um, like when you want to retire, like really retire, you'll upload your consciousness to the cloud <laughs> and live there forever. Yeah, sounds like a happy ending for like modern day people, right? Upload your mind to the cloud, live happily ever after. Yeah, I find it ironic that it's called the cloud. Like it's sort of comparable to heaven, right? It's above the cloud. Yeah, but about the consciousness being transferred to the cloud, like you live there for eternity. So I don't know if there's like happy ever after or boring ever after. Yeah, I actually wrote that in like my script, like sort of script. I just got bullet points that at first you'll be like happy because you can still like talk with people who are alive and then you'll become like anxious that whether you're real or not, whether this is actually you or this is a program and you have like a small crisis. But because you have a lot of money and you paid very well for this program, the company will have like some assistant or some psychologist to like talk to you and like make sure that you're actually you and stuff and you'll be happy. Quote unquote, they're trying to manipulate to get my money. But, but you'll still have your money because it might be electronic money in the future. So you can still like have fun, I guess. Oh, yeah, that sounds actually really, really nice. But I, I'm really glad that you're not my mother or my parents because that's such a huge expectations for me. Like everything sounds so great, but it's like huge expectations, right? But for you, it's gonna be gonna be expectation because if you listen to it, you'll find it pretty crazy. Okay. So I think Pra will spend the next six years at medical school. Well, this is not really unexpected because it's always your like kind of quote unquote dreams to be in medical schools. Um, and you enjoy a great time there. Of course, you'll freak out about the blood, inter organs and stuff at first, but you got all your friends there because obviously all your friends will be there. Um, so you get so you get on with medical school just fine. You have lunch at the cafeteria at close to here. So you'll live in the like probably the same community you have lived with for like 12 years. But something in your life will change you. You will want to change because everything sounds so boring. Everything start falling into pattern and you just think that maybe your life have more than that. So you went to study abroad in America for two years in an attempt to find true love, like in romantic comedy movies. Like, that's, that's perfect, right? You went to find your true love in America, but you end up getting a job because, because I know that's gonna happen. You won't find true love. You'll end up finding true love in other things. Well, to be honest, that's better because I would like rather find a job. <laughs> With this girl, working woman. That's my idol. So you'll end up getting a job as an aerospace physician who, but, but you need to enter a military training. So you become a very, very strict person and a very, very detailed person too. So you will work at the space elevator tower construction. Like you'll be the first guys up there and you'll get to see like the moon with an elevator on it. So it sounds so we have some similar elements yeah, there, space. like space oh, and That's stuff. not the only similar <laughs> elements. I guess we have like same mind patterns because like we watch black mirrors. That's probably it. So, so when you, when you work at the elevator, things are going pretty great, pretty fine. But then you lost your important loved ones and you'll commission someone to make a chat bot that contains all of the information of your dead loved one. But you won't like it very much because you're a very detailed person. So you, you'll find something to nitpick eventually. So you'll fall into a scheme and you'll start a startup company that makes a better chatbot. And your chatbot will become like the global level chatbot. So everything is going pretty great for your company. It's very famous. Everybody buys chatbot from you. Suddenly you were like, Okay, this is not enough. What if I die? So you made yourself, you uploaded yourself into a stuff, into a chatbot before you retire, and you become the most famous chatbot ever. Everybody buys you. Like you're at everybody at home. You're like Alexa, but you're proud instead. Like proud, proud. Can you give me some water, please? But something miraculously happened. 
something miraculous happen. Like, you become the first chatbot ever in the history of the world that is able to have a personality outside of the programmed thing, outside of the program you have been implanted with at the first place. So you continue to live on in the form of chatbot, but you have consciousness and you have more personalities than ever. You can learn new things. And I don't know, maybe in like 1,000 years, you'll end up in a museum, but you're still probably there. To be honest, it sounds like I'm going to like take over the world. <laughs> like I'm the bad chatbot. It depends on you, but you'll just have to keep <laughs> your moral in check. And you'll probably learn some philosophy as well. But it's funny that you started with like me going to medical school and then completely changed my occupation. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, because you'll fall into a startup scheme. So after we have talked about our future already, and it sounds pretty crazy, right? That's how our podcast's gonna be. It's gonna be a little bit crazy, but it's gonna be a little related to the truth. Do you actually know that Microsoft has already patented a chatbot that has programs that stores your loved one's information and use them? It's just straight up insane. It's just straight up insane, but it's becoming real every day. And it used to be sort of like Black Mirror stuff, but it's now reality stuff. You know why Shirley Brooker said he's not going to make Black Mirror season six? He says people are too stupid to realize something along that line. Well, I have a feeling like each one of the episode of like Black Mirror is becoming a reality, like one by one. Like this Be Right Back episode here. And the other one I've heard of is like Neuralink. So Elon Musk started and like an, a research that do on like a monkey or something that put a instrument over their head to like let them like manipulate subject. Or, I'm not sure. I'll need to do more research on that. But basically like he said something like you can probably play video games in your mind and stuff classic elon right but one of his projects but he, he's like the most funded guy ever and he's also smart so i think there's a high possibility that it might become the truth so the next activity will be revealing our bucket list and by reveal one by one you can say which one is accurate to the future that you're predicting so now I can start first. So my first bucket list is pretty plain and it's reading the book called Ulysses in Bloomsday. So the book Ulysses has a character whose last name is Bloom. And um, in the country where this, was, this whole event take place, uh, they celebrated one day for this book where everybody dress up as a character in this book and then they read this book out loud in places that the character goes. So it's pretty cool. I want to celebrate Bloom's Day there. If anybody wonder what Ulysses is, you can go check it up online right now. It's a book about a guy who walks around the city when his wife was having an affair with other men, but he described it so dramatically and the narrative changes every chapter and it was very great sure so okay so this is my first on the list in no particular order so i want to give a speech on ted talk <laughs> so um the second one is pretty accurate i would like to marry someone in like my life i would like to marry someone unbelievable right yeah sort of well, at first, like back to like your future prediction for a little bit, I, I said right that you will fall in love with a German guy. At first, I would say like a guy or a gal or a robot. I don't know, but you do you. Okay, what about yours? What's your second? Is it marrying someone as well? Marrying someone from your no, childhood? No, that's not on my list. No, spoiler alert. No, it's not there. So. The second one is I want to travel the world. Yeah, so there are like seven continents in the world, but I want to like cover at least six because the seventh one is Antarctica. <laughs> and so, and currently there are like 195 countries, right? Yeah, 90, 195 countries, I looked that up. 
in the world and so i want to like go to like at least 30 countries which is 15 percent i've just i've just been to like six and it will be an average of like every two years i have to go to a different countries like if i i'm lucky enough to live to my 100 years it will be consider fun. the possibilities that when you're getting older it's gonna be harder to travel yeah so i can like go to like multiple countries at a time right consider like europe for example i can like do like seven at a time i guess <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool when you go to europe i'm just kidding though but you you should save europe or the easy country when you're old you should choose the hard one yeah sure when you're young actually on the average i just redid my math it's like three or every three or four years i have to go to like a different country it would be fun though it would be fun yeah whatever what's your next one okay so my next one it was pretty basic like the first three one so write a book especially an autobiography because i'm sort of you know i have i have you can say a pretty fair amount of ego so i wanted to leave something for the younger generations to learn about myself yeah especially bad things that's why my prediction is obviously 99% accurate i guess like trying to add something seamlessly that sounds so like me okay nice <laughs> job okay so my third one is quite adventurous i want to do a paragliding have you heard of that oh yeah like um yeah yeah paragliding like uh, i don't know how to describe it it's paragliding it's like gliding in the sky right yeah gliding in the sky it's like flying i would say it's so cool yeah but i'm very afraid of heights but well you only leave one so yeah i'll go paragliding the next one would be i would like to punch a stranger what? like i would like to punch them in the face haven't you got the feeling that sometimes stranger can look very infuriating and you just want to punch them i would I wonder what will be the reaction of the stranger punched. And I wonder what I will feel like after that. You'll be punched, obviously. Oh, and that's fine. <laughs> because I just want to experience. We only live once. We can't provoke stranger on the street every day. Well, basically, yeah, we can. But not directly. Like, you punched them with no reason at all. What will be their response? It will be fun to get punched back, okay. too. That's a weird one. But I also have my weird one as well. <laughs> Okay, uh, so my number four is meet Michael Stevens because he's very cool and I love his channel so much and he's just the coolest dude on the internet. That's all I have to say. So the next one is okay. I want to dive deep underwater into the Mariana Trench. Maybe go on a submarine or sort of that stuff. So I'm really into oceans mm. like... I, I watch a lot of documentaries about it and even though it seems like pretty dark but it seems like another land another land that's not mm. what we see it's wonderful it's like wonderland on earth I wanted to see every bit of the ocean so Mariana Trench that's interesting but I hate ocean so I won't accompany you obviously <laughs> so my number five is meet Adam Savage and visit his cave he's just another coolest person like in the world like he's the coolest if you don't know him first of all where have you been <laughs> he's the co-host of mythbuster and you should check that show out all right so what 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 is what does he do with his cave in general for people who have been nowhere so uh he kept all his like project so he's basically like he worked in a what do you call an special effect industry so basically he does all the props for movies he was once worked with like star wars and he loved it and he have like very strange items and props when i watch his videos though He's just filled with passions and I feel like he's been doing this for like over decades and he still have passion in his work and like he still have fun, like he know how to have fun. And one time I almost cried because 
like he collaborated with like Michael Stevens on one video, and they were just nerding out about their watches. It's funny, but like Michael Stevens has one of the most weirdest watch ever. Like one literally tick count counterclockwise. It's a clock, but it ticks counterclockwise. But it would take a while until you figure out what the time is, and pretty dizzy. Yeah, so let's move on. Okay, so next, this one is pretty simple, and I guess like it's the classic bucket list thing. I want to experience free fall, like from the highest tower on Earth. But in the meanwhile, I want to put my headphone on and listen to "Time in the Bottle." Have, have you listened to that? Oh. That would be so cool. Like you watch the world. So that's actually. Technically on my list, so I'll jump jump to that. So, I wrote I want to experience zero g. So, like free falling is like you experience like zero gravity, right? So there's a flight called a zero g flight. So you fly on a plane, and the plane just fly in a specific set of pattern that creates temporarily zero g experience. Experience. So you'll be on a plane and you'll start floating, and you'll be vomiting yeah. as well. As I heard, no, because uh, you'll be like injected with some medicine to help with that. And I've done some research. It's very costly. It's six thousand pound, and so convert to Thai baht, it's two hundred and fifty thousand Thai baht. But it's obviously achievable if you really want to do it. And I've heard that. Before it was commercialized, it was used to train like astronaut before they go to outer space. Because they have to like experience first what it will be like to be in like zero gravity. But you know, just simple problem, simple solution. Just don't buy it. Vomit. I mean, easy. Just vomit. Who cares? I mean, but it's very cool because to I've vomit? seen like many YouTubers. No YouTubers are invited to like some of the flights, and they say that actually in outer space, if you light up like your match or what do you call your lighter and flame, it won't like hold up like the shape we know flames typically do because there's no gravity, so it'll be like a sphere shape flame in the space. So the seventh one for me is I would like to become a female monk. Like honestly, not ironically, but this one can sound a little like bit shave weird. your heads and stuff. Yeah, but not forever. But like maybe spend a month trying to absorb like you know the philosophy of Buddhism because um, I'm really cool. Actually, I was I I actually believe in like Buddhism itself at it at it at like its the core, core of Buddhism, of right? It. Yeah. So I would like to know what it's like to spend my time on solitude, and you know, discover some pieces of philosophy that could help me with my living. So my seventh one is I want to go to the Vamps concert. I just love this band. That's all. And I've never been to Thailand, and like I just want to like watch them perform live. Yeah, this one's simple. Okay, so your okay. next one is I want to drink a water from the glacier. In the North Pole. What? Okay, <laughs> you're shocked. Like, how cool would that be? I saw it in one X Men movies that, like, the antagonist they cut out an ice from a from the glacier, and then they drink some alcohol with that ice. I don't know what alcohol it is, or I don't know either what X Men movie is that, but it sounds pretty cool. Like. How uh -huh. good will it taste? Like no pollution, I guess. Oh sure, like it depends on where you cut the ice, probably. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so my next one is quite a、uh, normal stuff that people would want to put in their bucket list. I want to do a bungee jump, even though I'm terrified of heights. I still want to do it because you only live once. Who knows? I don't know because like I'm afraid of height, but like at first I wouldn't even dare to like get on a ro roller coaster. But my brothers convinced me when I was like 
I don't know, like three years ago or something, and I loved it. It's very fun, but I I'm still afraid of heights. I'll definitely get over it if I like do some bungee jump and stuff. But yeah, my fear of heights is just the fear of like you can't control things. Like I'm also like at first I was afraid of flying as well, like on the plane. Because yeah, because um, first of all, I'm afraid of heights, and second is because I always get very nauseous on the plane, and my ears are sort of clogged. So I hate planes. I still do, but I'm less afraid of that because I know that I'm not in control of the plane. If the plane cl- crash, then me, I'm not the factor that's going to make the plane crash or not. Like you know, I'm not the one to decide there. I can't control that. Worry or not, you can't control. Wow, that's so stoic. Admirable. The next one of on my list is I want to watch the star revol- revolves around me. And you know, um, in North Pole, the star can never disappear from outside. It's just going to move around us. That's the way. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Maybe like you. You know, when you watch the stars, the star seems like a dot in the sky that has no meanings at all because it's just a cluster, a random position of uh, another planets and another suns, another stars. They're just there. Just doesn't mean anything. But what what makes stargazing so great is that you can actually see the sky moves, and that's mm. romantic for me. I That'll guess. That'd be cool. Yeah, I actually I wanna like. Steal that from your bucket list. That sounds very cool. I actually dreamed, and I forgot to put this in the bucket <laughs> in the bucket list. So I want to like see the Milky Way. I've heard that like you could see the Milky Way in like the suburb, like literally because because why the reason why we don't normally see like stars and Milky Way is because we have too much light pollution. And in like the suburb areas where there's not much light, you can literally see the Milky Way very clearly. Yeah, I've heard of that, and it's very cool. Yeah, steal that from your bucket list. So my number nine is I want to be healthy and have some abs. <laughs> <laughs> because why not? Like, probably like months ago, I I actually planned that I might be a vegetarian in the future because I'm not. Into meat that much anyway, and I, I guess it will be more sustainable and eco-friendly. I don't know because plants just take less resource to grow. They just need water and soil, and pigs and cows just takes lots of space, and you can get enough proteins from like plants anyway. Yes, but being a vegetarian has never come to cross my mind because I like meat. Like I like its taste very much, so but I'm fine if anybody's gonna produce like a veggie meat and serve it to me as long as it feels like meat. I'm fine with that, but I could never imagine just eating plants without something that tastes like meat. Hmm. I mean, vegetarian is a good idea. Don't get me wrong, but I just can't do it. It's just it's on me. It's not <laughs> on the idea of vegetarian. Yeah, it's. Personal thing. I wouldn't judge you for that. Who am I to judge anyway? So I'm still deciding on it though. But I won't be like too serious about it if like there's no meal for me to like. There's no vegetarian meal for me to eat in a restaurant. I would like happily order some pork and stuff. I'll be fine. It's not like I'm going to take it very seriously. Mm-hmm. Great. But I think oh you'll have a hard time if you're a vegetarian. Doing my in Thailand. Life. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, so the next one in my bucket list is I want to do a Minecraft-style survival in Amazon forest. I always want to try out like whether the thing on Minecraft is actually usable. Like, of course, you can't chop tree with your hands, but a lot of things <laughs> like can come too handy, and I think that under. Those gameplays, there's like a concept of survival there. Like, what do you need mm. to survive, basically? Mm. Because when I play Minecraft, I don't like to build things. I'm not great at that. I just go on cave to cave, explore the world, 
being. So that's why my story is again very accurate. That you like learn that on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very accurate. Nice job. It will become a reality. Okay. I guess <laughs> if I survive to Mars. This is kind of weird, but I want to draw a portrait of myself. It's just <laughs> <laughs> surprising. No, it's because no because well when we have like art assignment we usually like take a lot of times with it and it actually turned out to be quite great but when i try to draw myself i tried it once it and it doesn't look very nice <laughs> because it's not an assignment so i don't really like put much time and effort into it so it really came out to be terrible but this time i really want to draw myself and i want to draw myself right because why not <laughs> Maybe you can draw yourself without. You know how a lot of artists have portraits of themselves that actually didn't resemble themselves so much. It's just the concept of what they think they are. So maybe it cannot. Yeah. It don't have. It doesn't have to be like perfect portrait that capture every detail. No, of your I format. I would do that anyway. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that anyway. I mean like just capture a sense of who I am and not like a cartoonish way. Yeah. Well, I mean, our bucket list. I you, I I I think that most of the things that we want to do is like something that we think achievable in this life. So, mm. but it sounds it can sounds pretty crazy too. Like every bucket list should sound because if your bucket list is like eating breakfast, I mean that would be pretty depressing. That's not a bucket list. You're gonna. <laughs> I mean, that's a sure. <laughs> No, eating breakfast is not a chore. It's a must. If you don't do that, you're gonna die. Not not die, but feeling pretty bad. I guess that's it. Okay, so now we're coming to an end to the first episode. We hope you guys enjoy our crazy ideas and probably some reality. Yeah, a lot of reality in this. And small facts that we would like to present it to you in this episode. So, proudly, can you leave our audience some last note about how to contact us? So yes, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and you can even email us. So we'll leave you with some interesting question. The question is that um, actually we will want to do this format every time that we have an episode. So we wanted to leave you a small question about yourself, probably a stupid question, I guess. Um, yeah, maybe it's stupid, but it's not like the same old question you used to get. For example, this time it will be, what would you imagine yourself be like in the next 100 years? I mean, you could probably be dead. And that's the point of imagining it because you won't know what happened after your death. And imagining it now is not it's no different from the reality anyway. Or you might not die at all. Or maybe consider like uploading yourself to the cloud and stuff. So let let us know what you think about the future of yourself. Yes. And, okay. and yeah, you can email us at uh Let's talk stupid dot stupid at gmail dot com. Don't ask why it's dot stupid because it's completely compound's fault. And I'm roasting her again and again. It's just funny. No, you know, first I wanted I wanted to be like let's talk stupid dot podcast, but my brain is fried and also I'm stupid, so I insert the word stupid instead. And it turns out to be let's talk stupid dot stupid, and I ask proud whether you want to change it or not. But somehow she was like, "Nah, that's fine, calm down." And yet here she is <laughs> roasting me again. All right. <laughs> and um, about other way to listen to our podcast, we're currently considering Clubhouse. So, but we're not really um, we're not really sure about that yet, right? So let us know what you mm, think we'll about consider that. me being on Clubhouse. If a lot of people say that, it'll we be fun. So like. To our like English teachers out there, if you're listening to this, sorry. <laughs> That's all I could say. Sorry, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. English is hard, but we still want to do this podcast in English anyway because we want to improve. So yeah, maybe our you can skills. send our grammatical mistake list in our emails as well. That will be fine. 
and we will listen to it and try to improve. Overall, we would like to say thank you. Say thank you, Prat. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. That's <laughs> nice. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening and have a good day. Bye. We'll see you next week. Bye.